Hey everyone, my name is Donald and in this video we're going to be discussing custom layouts. Custom layouts is one of the most powerful uh, modules that Astra offers. You can actually create very unique designs with little effort. You can add custom sections wherever you desire. You can build custom headers and custom footers along with custom 404 pages. Uh, there's just so much that you can do with this module. So once we've got Astra Pro installed, all you have to do is navigate to Appearance and Astra Options. From there, you're going to scroll down and you're going to activate custom layouts. Go ahead and navigate to Settings. And once you are in the custom settings, you can go ahead and click Add New. So we're going to go ahead and enter our title. We're going to go ahead and start off by creating a header. So from here, we have it named header. And down here in the custom layout options, we have a few different things. We have header, footer, four, four page, and hooks. If we click on the header, it gives us a few additional options. We have stick, which you can choose if you want the custom header to be sticky or not. If you choose the header to stick on the top of the page, you can choose whether you want it to shrink which enabling this will remove all of the top and the bottom space from the header so that it shrinks when you scroll. And then you have the stick on options, which allow you to stick on desktop mobile or desktop and mobile. You also have the display on button, which allows you to select which part of the website you want the header to display on. So if you want it on the entire website or if you want it on your post pages, your blog page. So you have different sections that you can go ahead and display it on. And you also have your user roles, which allow you to display your header for people who are logged in or logged out, which really adds a lot of functionality if you're running a membership site. So let's go ahead and create a basic one that displays on the entire website for everyone. And let's go ahead and hit publish. Now, Creating a custom header is possible with a bunch of different page builders, such as Elementor, Beaver Builder, Divi, and all of those uh, popular page builders. For the video, we're going to go ahead and use Elementor. So from here, let's go ahead and build a custom header. Okay, now you see that we have our custom header. So let's go ahead and update this. And let's exit back to our dashboard. So now that we've got this built, and we have it set as the header, the entire website, and for everyone to see, let's go ahead and do a double update. And then let's go ahead and view our website. So right now we have our header here, which is our logo, the navigation, and then we have a call to action button right here. This is a great way to design a custom header that can be different from the default header that Astra provides if you want to add a little bit more functionality to your site. Let's go ahead and discuss the stick. So when we turn on stick, as we mentioned earlier, it'll stick to whichever drop-down menu selection you, you pick. Desktop, mobile, uh, and desktop mobile. And then you also have your shrink options. So let's go ahead and add desktop. And then let's go ahead and update this. Refresh our page. And when we scroll down, you'll see that we have this desktop navigation that is being sticked to the top. We can also edit this appearance so that we have less of a transparent page title. And then we can also go ahead and change up our image, just like so. And you can see that we have that sticky just like that. Let's go ahead and edit this once more. Let's add the Astra.
So we have this right here, just like this. Let's go ahead back to dashboard and we'll see, and we'll go ahead and enable shrink. Let's refresh this. And you can see subtly that it takes the padding from the top and bottom and removes it. If we enhance the padding on the top and bottom, then it would make it more noticeable. So depending on how much padding you have is depending on how much it's going to shrink. So for that example right there. So that's just a quick overview of being able to design a custom header with your custom layouts module that Astro provides. So when we design in custom layouts, we have that header option, but let's go ahead and discuss the footer option. Let's add a new custom layout, title this footer. Let's go ahead and select our layout and we're gonna choose footer below. From there, we have the same options. We have stick, display on, and user roles. Let's make one that displays on the entire website and for everyone. Let's go ahead and enable the uh, editor with Elementor and let's build our footer. Okay, so as you can see, we have our custom built footer right here. Let's go ahead and next back to our dashboard, update this, and we'll go ahead and refresh. If we scroll to the bottom of our site, we have this custom footer that we've made. And this is completely de custom designs with Elementor. You don't have to use the default footer if it doesn't uh, suit the needs for the website design. Now we also have this option for stick. This allows us to have the footer be a sticky footer on desktop mobile or desktop and mobile. Let's go ahead and choose desktop for now. And we'll refresh. So as you can see, we have a sticky footer and a sticky header. This allows you to use the sticky footer for messages if you want to do that, or if you want to have it so that it's like an app-like interface on mobile, you could do that as well. So if you create a separate footer for mobile, that way you can go ahead and have like an app like interface like Facebook has or uh, any app that has the icons at the bottom of the screen. Continuing along after footer, we can go ahead and custom design our own 404 page. So if you have a 404 page, and let's see what it looks like. Let's get to our 404 page. And we have this as our 404 page right here. This page does not seem to exist. It looks like the link pointing here is faulty. So maybe we want to go ahead and add something along those lines. So let's go ahead and add a custom layout. Title this our 404 page. We want to go to layout and select 404 page right here. And we have a few different options. We can disable the primary header and disable the footer bar. So the primary header is able to be disabled and the footer bar. So if you want it to be a complete page with no header or footer, you can do that as well, or you can just disable one or the other. We also have user roles, so we can have it for everyone, logged in and logged out. So if, if you have a membership site and they reach a page that they aren't supposed to, or that they are, that's missing, that's not there, you can prompt them with a list of pages that they do have access to. Or if you want it for everyone, you can make something generic. Let's go ahead to add user roles to all. So let's go ahead and create our 404 page. So now we have our custom error 404 page. So let's go ahead, navigate back to the dashboard. 
And we have our 404 page listed here. Let's give this a quick update and let's refresh this. So now we have our custom 404 page that allows us to have a search bar, a go home button, and a contact us. Let's go ahead and disable the primary footer and update this. So now you can see that we have no footer on our site. Let's go ahead and disable the primary header. Click update. And now you can see that we have no header on the primary page as well. Quick note, disable primary and header and disable footer bar only work for the default Astra header and footer. This does not work for a custom designed header or footer that you've built with custom layouts. Another great feature of custom layouts is the ability to hook any section that you build into any part of the website. So let's go ahead and try this now. Let's add a social sharing icons to the bottom of all of our blog posts. Let's go ahead and add social sharing. And under layout, we're gonna go ahead and navigate to hooks. Now, once we've navigated to hooks, we have a few different options here. We have action, priority, spacing, display on, and user roles. From there, we can go ahead and edit a few of these options to get it the way we need it to look. So let's start with action. Action gives us a list of examples of places that we can go ahead and insert our custom layout into any part of the website. And some of these may look familiar. And there is a link that allows you to go ahead and see all of the different layout sections of your site. Let's go ahead and go there now. So right here, you can see that we have a sample website. We have our header up here. We also have our content, and then we also have a sidebar as well as a footer down here. You can go ahead and see where these different elements can be inserted by looking at these spaces right here. So for example, we want it to be at the bottom of our blog post. So we can either choose entry content after or entry bottom. Let's go ahead and click entry bottom. I'm sorry, entry content after. We'll go ahead and click that. Priority allows us to go ahead and pick which custom layout is going to appear first if you have two custom layouts that are hooked to the same action. So if you have two custom layouts that are entry content after, you can use the priority to determine which one is going to be on top and which one is going to be on the bottom or which one is going to come after one another. The lower the number, the higher the content will be in the actual content on the front end. So for example, for these social sharing, we're going to leave this blank. But if we had another custom layouts for entry content after that we wanted to appear after the social sharing, we would put the social sharing one and the other one would be two. So it's just same as uh, the numerical order. Spacing allows us to add top or bottom padding to the custom layout that we're adding to our content. Display on allows us to pick who gets to see this on which part of the site. So if you want it to be on the entire website or if you want it to be on just all of the posts, just like we do. We want all of this social sharing to appear on just the post pages. And then we have user roles. So the user roles allows us to pick who gets to see this and we're gonna pick everyone. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and build our custom layout. So with Elementor, they have a social sharing button element. So this allows us to go ahead and just add this element here and we could add more down here if we needed to. And we could also add a custom, a custom label. Let's go ahead and hit publish. Exit back to our dashboard. And we're just gonna hit publish over here on the right. Let's go ahead and navigate to our blog page. So we can see we have two blogs here. Let's go ahead and navigate to this one. And you can see that we have our social sharing icons down here below. 
we can go ahead and take this so that we can draft this. And I'll show you guys that when we do that, the social sharing actually goes away. So this is an easy way to make it so that the social sharing is right at the bottom of the site of the posts. And there's absolutely no coding necessary to do this. So you can add things like an author box, social sharing. Um, you can add a call to action at the bottom. You can add plenty of items. You can even add a contact form at the bottom of all, of all your blog posts that allows you to have people contact you from your single blog post. It's, it's, it's unbelievably powerful. Moving with the custom layouts, there's other options that you're able to have. So over here we have the hooks, and then we have the ability to insert custom code into our site. So let's go ahead and add a PHP code. Now the PHP code that I'm going to go ahead and add shows when the post was last updated. So let's go ahead and hook this into the content before our WordPress blog. So we wanted to do entry content before. Let's go ahead and choose entry content before. And we're gonna go ahead and display this on the entire blog posts for everyone. Let's go ahead and save this as a draft. So right here we have the enable code editor. If we click that, we can paste in our snippet right here that allows us to figure out when the post was last updated, which shows right here. So let's go ahead and publish this. And then we see that we don't have it here now. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And then we have the content that says this post was last updated on March 10th, 2018. So that we have the ability to show that for everyone on the front end without actually having to hook into the themes core files and, and potentially mess that up with any updates or anything like that. So that was a quick rundown of the custom layouts module. Thank you all for joining us today. We can't wait to see what you all build with this great add-on.